Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ on this beautiful Christmas day. Now I may be on thin ice a little bit here this morning because I'm going to talk about how we should be living our daily lives. I was talking to Pastor Kirk earlier this week. I'd like to talk about what are you preaching on? What are you going to preach on this week? Well, Pastor Kirk is down in St. Genevieve today, and we were talking about which lesson we'd be preaching on today. I said, oh, I think I'm going to do the epistle reading for today. And he says, yeah, I'm going to ask them down there, what are you waiting for? So I thought, well, you know, I might not be the only one who might be in a little trouble this morning. But, you know, the thing to remember as we talk about this is that Christ has come. He has chosen you to be his people. And so our readings today, and if you follow the program bulletin, you see that it talks about what that means for you, holy and beloved children of God. To live a sanctified life, in other words, to put on a life of Christ. Our readings for today help us to answer that question. The day after Christmas Day, the 26th, we were driving uh, to the store and I was passing a neighbor's house and he was taking down his Christmas lights. And so we stopped and we put down the window and I was joking with him. I said, hey, what are you doing? Christmas isn't over yet. And he said, check your calendar. So I did. I checked my calendar, and you know what I found out? It's still Christmas. We're still in the Christmas season. We are no longer waiting. Christmas has come. The Lord has come. Joy to the world. For many, the joy of Christmas is in opening those presents or the abundant amount of food, chocolates, think chocolate, beverages, but the joy of this world often seems to be as empty as those packages that are strewn about the living room floor and those wrappings that are laying about as we gather them up and pitch them out. As evidenced by my friend, that glow of Christmas fades rather quickly. Some of you may have noticed, if you were here on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, that we sang joy to the world in both services to conclude both services. And that's all right. There's nothing wrong with that. As a matter of fact, our post-holiday challenge is to rediscover the joy that is inspired by that song of ages ago. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. This is at the point that Pastor Kirk would probably say, what are you waiting for? We move from waiting to witnessing in anticipation, from anticipation to a joy-filled celebration. Christ fills us with a joy that cannot be contained. And let me give you an example of that. As you turn to your gospel reading for today, if you will, and follow along with me, and I invite you to take that pencil from the pew in front of you, or your pen that you might have with you. And we're going to look at Simeon's response to the Lord has come, beginning with verse 29. Lord, now you are letting your servant, and I want you to underline, depart in peace. And underline, according to your word. For my eyes have seen... Underline your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of. Underline all peoples. A light for the revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory and for glory to your people Israel. That was Simeon's song. Now let's look at the prophetess Anna. Let's go down to verse 37, second part of that. Because she did not depart from the temple, worshiping, underline worshiping, with fasting and prayer, underline prayer, 
You see, she was waiting, anticipating, but now, and coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks. Underline, give thanks to God and to speak of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. Worshiping, giving thanks, departing in peace, moving from waiting to witnessing. What are you waiting for? You remember our gospel reading from Christmas Day from Luke chapter 1. It said, In him Jesus was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. He was in the world. There was a man sent from God. His name was John, and he came as a... To bear witness about the light. Why? That all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to bear witness about the light. Moving from waiting to witnessing. What are we waiting for? Our epistle reading for today helps us to give a give us an understanding of how the life and light of Jesus, born in Bethlehem, manifests itself in our lives today. How we put off the old self, the old life, and we put on that life in Christ. So take a look at that Colossians reading. You have been chosen by God to put on a new life. So what does that mean for us? Well, our Colossians reading helps to answer that question, helps to organize our thoughts a little bit. And I see three takeaways from that Colossians reading. You might find more, but let's look at three of those. The first one has to do with our communal life together here at Zion and with others in the body of Christ. You see, you have been chosen to be the sons and the daughters of the Most High God. So put on, then, as God's chosen one, you holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, patience. Bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, make sure you hold a grudge for as long as you can. No! That's not right. Forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything in perfect harmony. You see, these five virtues are bound together in love. A communal life of love bound together in harmony. Wow. Can you imagine that? With all the disharmony and discord in the world, in our nation, maybe even in your own family. Zion Lutheran Church Sanctuary for the weary soul. Wow. Wouldn't that be something? Nora, you have to close your ears for just a minute for this one. In our family, we joke about when the girls were very small, there would be at times that bid for our attention, and they would say, Mom, look at me. Dad, watch me. Yes, I'm watching. I'm looking. Wouldn't it be a wonderful thing as the chosen children of God who have put on Christ Jesus that when people are watching, when people are looking, that they not only see you, but they see Christ in you. Perfect harmony. 
The second thing from our epistle reading about living a life in Christ, our sanctified living, is that our worship and our lives are centered in God's Word. And so we look for and we take advantage of opportunities to be in worship together and to be in His Word, centered around God's Word. I'd like to share with you that in a couple of weeks, by God's grace, I'm going to have the opportunity to go on a short-term mission trip to Hong Kong. The Lutheran Church Hong Kong Synod has grown to about 40 congregations, and that grew out of the China mission of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. The Lutheran Church Hong Kong is committed to Lutheran education, that teaching, as an outreach to the people of Hong Kong. And this LCMS partner has grown in Hong Kong by focusing an outreach on education. And so Hong Kong Lutheran Church of Hong Kong has about six primary schools, about six secondary schools, 12 kindergartens, a seminary, a school for the deaf, and a school for the mentally handicapped. And though the Synod serves the community in other ways, education is that tried and true way to reach the people because while the congregations have about 9,000 members, there are about 22,000 students in these Lutheran schools. 80% of them are non-Christian. Our small team will leave for Hong Kong to teach lessons centered in God's Word in one of the secondary schools. We have this opportunity to share the love of Christ through relationships that we build, through teaching in English, and participating in other school activities, and possibly even visiting some of the homes of the students. And we're going to have an active role in sharing our faith with students who are hearing about Jesus Christ for the first time, other than what they hear in their schools. And while we have the opportunity to share God's word with the students, having these teams come from America helps also to draw more students to the schools, an ever-increasing population of folks that will hear God's word and God's love for them in their lives. Now, I know that not everybody has opportunities like this. But God provides opportunities in other ways to worship together, to be in Bible study together, and to let the Word of God, the Word of Christ, dwell in you teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom and singing psalms and hymns, and spiritual songs. Singing psalms, and hymns, and spiritual songs. Maybe you have the gift of singing. Maybe you can join the choir. Or maybe you can join the bells. I didn't check that out with Barb. I'm sure it'd be fine. Maybe you can join the bells and play hymns and spiritual, spiritual songs. Sharing your musical talents in praise of God in our worship. What are you waiting for? Third thing from our Colossians reading is to let the peace of God rule in our hearts and to receive all things from God in a spirit of thankfulness. You know, there are a lot of things that want to rule in our hearts today, aren't there? That's not easy. But we remember that the life of Christ that the Apostle Paul talks about is grounded and rooted in the redemptive work of Christ in which he has made us his own people. It is only because of what Christ has done for us that we are able to put on this new life. We don't put on this new life so that we can receive Christ's blessings. He's already blessed us. He's already come. He's already chosen you to be holy and his beloved. 
We are able to do it because God has blessed us and chosen us to be his own. The life of those who follow Jesus is a baptismal life. Drowning the old Adam, putting on the new. It is a life begun in baptism, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God, who raised him from the dead. And you, who were dead in your trespasses, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses, by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. That also is from Colossians chapter 2, and the last says, This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. And that's why we spend time in worship, in witnessing, in celebrating his coming. He forgives, he comforts, he consoles us when we need it. He leads and guides us in our daily lives, even as he prepares a place for us in heaven in the life to come. That is why the peace of God rules in our hearts. That is why others see Christ in us when they watch and look. As we reach out and love welcoming and caring for and sharing God's word with all people. Amen. Just a little reminder, because on these measuring spoons, the first one says, a pinch of joy. We've talked about that, haven't we, during this season? Joy to the world. I think we need more than a pinch. Second one says, a dash of tenderness. The third one says, a spoonful of affection. And can you guess which... The largest one is the tablespoon. A heap of love that binds together all things in perfect harmony. And now may the peace which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.